Welcome to another edition of Beatles News Briefs with all the Beatle news we can fit. It's November 12, 2018, and I'm Steve Marinucci, freelance writer and moderator of the free, uh, Facebook Beatle News and Information Group. Let's get to the news. Uh, Ringo Starr today announced tour plans for 2019 with his all-star band, which will have Steve Lukather, Colin Hay, Greg Grawley, Warren Hamm, Greg Bissett, and the return of all-star alumni Hamish Stewart. The first leg begins in March uh, with a U.S. show at Harris Resort, Southern California in Funner, that's F-U-N-N-E-R, California, on March 21st before the band heads to Japan, beginning March 27th and running until April 11th. They will then have a date in Windsor, then it's on to Chicago with two dates with the Beach Boys, two shows at Nashville's Ryman Auditorium, August 7th and 8th, and the tour will end September 1st at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. That's not the full itinerary, but the full itinerary will be revealed soon. Meanwhile, Ringo closed out Joe Walsh's The Concert for Our Veterans last night in Tacoma, Washington, singing with a little help from my friends. Also performing besides Walsh were James Taylor, Chris Stapleton, and Don Henley. Jules, Julian's auctions uh, today uh, released the results of their latest Icons and Idols auction that included... Many celebrity items, including a couple by the Beatles, uh, John Lennon's uh, green-tinted flap metal frame sunglasses that he wore in the 1967 Penny Lane music video, which were estimated to go for ten to $20,000, sold for $40,625. Ringo Starr's Ludwig drum kit used in a 2000 Charles Schwab Super Bowl commercial sold for $15,625. The ad is kind of cute. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a fun thing. Uh, Ringo comes in and the first words he says, believe it or not, are dividend reinvestment participation. You'll have to see the rest of the ad to see what what leads up to that. But it, it's a really cute ad. Uh, look it up on YouTube. New from Uncut Magazine and on newsstands in the UK is George Harrison, The Ultimate Music Guide. Uh, Americans can order it online at yourcelebritymagazines.com. Crayola now has an adult coloring book based on Lennon and McCartney lyrics. It's available through shop.crayola.com. Stan Lee, the creator of Spider-Man, died November 12th, and there were reports in 2005 that he was going to make Ringo a superhero. Um, he was going to put out a cartoon series um, that uh, Ringo would voice uh, as the evil, battling, earth-saving hero with a great sense of rhythm in an am animated TV and DVD series planned for 2006. But, of course, that never happened. Um, Stanley at the time said, Ringo is beloved worldwide for his commitment to people and his singular wit. Our Ringo superhero character will combine these qualities along with Ringo's secret powers. We never did get to find out what those secret powers were, did we? Um, just a reminder, um, I know we went through a whole bunch of White Album stuff uh, over the weekend with the release of the White Album set. If you haven't already heard it, um, we did a special Beatle News Brief program on the new White Album set. Um, Beatle News author Candy Leonard and I reviewed the set, and we also had interviews with Giles Martin, Ken Mansfield, and Brian Southall. Uh, we hope you won't miss it. It's about an hour long. It's a little longer than nor our normal shows. And it's on YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, and wherever podcasts can be found. Uh, Apple Jam's latest release off the White Album, speaking of the White Album again, gives a Beatles spin to songs written by John, Paul, jo and George, but never released by the Beatles. Uh, Apple Jam's lead vocalist and beat, uh, bass player says... It's a companion to the Beatles' White Album. It's our version of what the third disc might have been. The track listing is Not Guilty, Child of Nature, Goodbye, Step Inside Love, Rishikesh Song, Cosmically Conscious, India, India, Sour Milk Sea, What's the New Mary Jane, Circles, and Suicide. The group will also have a, a live show with a 50th anniversary celebration December 1st at Seattle's Neptune Theater. The concert will showcase White Album classics and feature songs off from off the White Album, plus other songs from the period. 
drummer Alan White, who is a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee with Yes, and also played on a John Lennon's Imagine album and George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, and has sat in with Apple Jam previously, will be a guest. Tickets are available from stgpresents.org, or you can call 800-745-3000. In the How Times Haven't Changed department, uh, a friend of ours on Facebook got suspended for a day for posting a copy of a pi- the, pi- the front cover picture for John and Yoko's Two Virgins cover, which just passed its 50th anniversary. And it's a couple of years old, but if you like political parodies, um, you might want to look for, uh, on YouTube, look for Rocky Mountain Mike's parody called Happiness is a Jail Trump, which obviously goes uh, after a Happiness is a Warm Gun. Uh, Paul McCartney set watch. There's no shows until November 28th when the tour resumes in Paris at the Paris La Defense Arena. Look back in history. November 13th, 1966, Brian Epstein called ridiculous reports that two of the Beatles had asked Alan Klein to take over management of the group. Also on the same date, Paul McCartney designed a stage back cloth that was used for a Four Tops concert at the Seville Theater in London. On November 14th, 1964, the Beatles taped an appearance on Ready, Steady, Go, and later John and Ringo attended a Georgie Fame show at the Flamingo Club in Soho. Happy birthday, November 12th, to Neil Young, and uh, November 13th to Whoopi Goldberg, has, who, as you remember, was seen in Eight Days a Week. Albums released on this date. November 13th, 2000 is the anniversary of the release of The Beatles 1, which featured 27 number, number one songs by the group and topped the charts all over the world and has been one of the world's best-selling albums ever since. It has been it's been remastered and reissued most recently in 2015 with an added DVD Blu-ray with the group's videos, which was way, way, way overdue and which we called essential in our review for it. Fifty years ago in 1968, the number one song was Hey Jude. And that's it till next time. Um, you can find the show in heavy rotation on fab4radio.com and thanks to Matt Burley for putting us there. Um, you can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts can be found. Um, thanks for listening and until next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Bye. that one market fab